Hey guys, what's going on? Tua Cruz here, checking in with... Tua We're here with Tua and Sean, and today we are cycling in Hiroshima City. So we're right here at Hiroshima Castle. We're just leaving the center of the castle area, and we're doing a little ride around some of the main tourist attractions here. And we're gonna loop around here. I think there's a better view of the castle that we can show you guys over this way. And anyway, for anyone who is just joining along, we're actually doing a little bit of a drive and bike tour across the west side of Japan. We normally live in Nagoya, in the center of Japan, but we're on vacation right now. We're going for a little trip, a road trip and cycling trip. So we've been cycling every day. We brought our bikes in our car. We just did the Shimanami Kaido ride yesterday. And then we drove over to Hiroshima city last night and we got out of our hotel and we brought our bikes into our hotel room and now we're doing some explorations around the city. So luckily we brought our bikes with us and we can do some nice exploration rides here in Hiroshima to see what it's like riding a bike here. How is it different than cycling in Nagoya, which is the city where we live. And so far we've already noticed a couple <laughs> big differences, but we're actually just in the beginning of our ride. So we're going to be experiencing this together, but check out this awesome view. Hiroshima Castle right here. Yeah, just like I thought, we get a better view from over here on the other side of the moat. And this is beautiful. Check this out. They got some, uh, what's that called? Uh, croquet? It's not croquet. Some sort of like dirt, <laughs> dirt golf kind of sport. Um, I see, yeah, some elderly people in Japan doing that all the time. I never know actually what it is long golf or something like that but the japanese version they do it on sand because there's there's very little grass here and anyway in this video we're going to be cycling around some of the main tourist attractions here in hiroshima city so luckily it's a pretty small city actually and all the main tourist attractions are kind of gathered around over in this area it looks like so i have a general sense of what it looks like in my head and we're going to try and figure it out i have a feeling there's going to be some signs all around so we should be able to find it. I think we're going to go left here. We're back by a main road. So that last road was really peaceful. Oh, there's some fish over here. Check this out. Uh, meter. My wife loves fish. Oh, she's just freaking out. I guess these guys are used to people feeding them. Check that out. There's a whole bunch of koi fish in here. This is like my wife's dream. Tuncha no Yumeira. Yeah, my wife is obsessed with fish. It kamemo. Doko. Oh wow! There's a turtle too. Check that out. He's just chilling. Uh. Oh, that's funny. Sorry guys, we're not feeding you. <laughs> what a fun surprise. Ine. Sugoi. <laughs> So today is already an exciting day because Tuan Chan is testing out her brand new shoes. Yeah. Anyway, let's continue on. We've got a lot of sights to see today. And we're going to try and show as much of the city as we can to you guys. If you like these videos, we'd appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up. It really helps support the channel so we can keep making more cycling videos here in Japan for you guys. But this is a nice little path they have going around the castle. I'm not sure if it's a great cycling course to do laps here. It's pretty short, but if you were doing running or something, this would be a nice place to run. We've got some good separation from the cars over there and lots of nature around here. And today we've got a little bit of cloudy weather, but that's okay. It's been really sunny the last few days and I've actually got a little bit sunburnt, so I don't mind the cooler weather right now. And it's also, yeah, the sign that it's an end of summer here. We've had some crazy hot weather here in Japan lately. This is like a new kind of delivery service, Wolt. I'm not sure, is that international? Do you guys have that in your country? We have Uber Eats here, which has been really popular. But uh, Wolt is like the new <laughs> up and coming one. I don't know, it seems pretty popular here in Hiroshima. I've seen a lot of people using it, but I've never really seen it over in Nagoya, which is where we live. All right, and it looks like it wants us to go this way for bicycles. So we're gonna have to loop around the castle a little bit. Oh, that's cool, they got some boats there. Do they do boat tours here around the moat? That'd be pretty interesting. 
Oh, running a cool suit. So it's about 1.2 uh, kilometers, I guess, around. We can get a nice view of the boats over here. That's pretty interesting. Uh, and they've got koi signs on the boats. So I guess this moat must be famous for its koi fish. So you can go down those boats, do a nice koi fish <laughs> tour. My wife would probably really love that. And I think we can bike here. I didn't see any sign saying no biking. I did just see a sign saying don't feed the koi fish. So maybe they have a problem with that, too many people feeding them. This is another inside part of the castle we can go to. That's pretty cool that they have this all open up to biking. But you have to keep in mind, if you ever do come here to bike, uh, make sure that you're not just like crazy speeding all over the place. The priority always goes to the pedestrian, so you want to make sure you never do anything uh, to endanger them. Check out these guys. There's koi fish. I wonder how many koi fish there are in this moat. There's got to be an insane amount. Oh, and there's a turtle here too. Lots of turtles. What up, guys? Turtles and koi fish. Koko wa chuan no tengoku da. Yeah. Yeah, we've explored quite a bit of the castle area. We're going to get out of here and go into the next park and see some of the other memorials. Yeah, we're not the only ones biking here. I wanted to make sure and I saw other people biking first before we went around, uh, just to make sure. Sometimes they can be really sensitive about uh, where you should be riding a bike and where you shouldn't be riding a bike. And what's this? Oh, cool, we got an underground path. So it says you can go by bike, just make sure you're going slow and where does this take us? <laughs> That's pretty cool. I love when they have underground bike paths like this. Oh, here we go. Peace Memorial Park. Uh, so, what do we got here? We just came from the castle. We just came from the castle. Uh, we got the garden that way. But we actually want to go this way. And we want to go to the Peace Memorial Park. It's about one kilometer away. So yeah, everything here is really close. There's some signs on the ground here saying uh, make sure to prioritize the pedestrians. So if there's a lot of pedestrians here, you have to give them right away. Which is totally understandable, but today we have low traffic, no problem. This is pretty cool. We don't really have many underground tunnels like this in Nagoya. And right here, we have a map of where we are. We just did a loop around the castle area. So we're starting up here and we're gonna make our way down here to the Peace Memorial Park area and show all of that. It looks like this is the Peace Boulevard. I'm not sure if we can ride along that, but there's a lot of places we wanna explore. But for today's video, I think we're mainly gonna focus on this area. We also wanna explore the river, see if they have any cycling paths along there. Oh, there's so much. We gotta do, we gotta keep going. So this side road, it's a little bit more separated from the cars, a little bit more quiet and interesting things like that. <laughs> and nice public water fountains. Back to the main road though. Ah, here we go. So that's why they had that red structure there. This is the Museum of Art. We're not going here though. And oh wow, there's a nice hotel, the Royal Hotel. That is pretty massive. We're actually staying in a pretty nice hotel. Our hotel is, we're on the 12th floor. So here we go. This is the, the other bike delivery service I was talking about. And they have, they make them wear like blue shirts. So I think Uber Eats, you can wear whatever you want. I'm not sure, I've never done it. Uh, but they have the blue bag, they have the blue shirts. Let me know, have you heard of this company before? Walt, is it regional? Do you have it in your country? A lot more pedestrians here. Oh, wow. Here we are. Welcome to Hiroshima. Nice sign. And we're going to go really slow in here. This looks insane. Wow. Just 
check out this area. They even have like a little waterfall thing right in between the escalators. And really cool clock there. Luckily, this is all within walking distance of our hotel. We're gonna have to come here and explore on one of the rainy days. We've got rain forecasted tomorrow, so today we gotta ride as much as possible. And then tomorrow's a rainy day, so tomorrow we'll do the indoor stuff. And a lot of places coming out with the Halloween decorations now. The, the Halloween marketing in Japan is pretty funny because they just sort of, they label everything like Halloween, but they don't actually change anything <laughs> and none of the flavors really change or anything like that. Uh, let's double check, make sure we're going the right way. We're not. We were sort of going in the wrong way, but we need to turn right here. That's okay. This will take us exactly where we need to go. So it's crazy to think that we're this close to the memorial right there, but you can see there's all this really well developed city right here. And yeah, they've got subway here. The other interesting thing here is they've got the, the cable cars in the center of the roads. And that's really unique. We don't have anything like that over in Nagoya. And let's cross here while well, we can. They also have some really cool shopping streets. We went for a little walk on them last night. And here we are, this is the... <laughs> so you have to be really careful on the center lanes for the trolleys. Uh, there's some massive holes there, so you want to make sure you're crossing that directly. It was also pretty intimidating when we drove here last night because we had to turn right, but you have to be careful that one of those things isn't coming behind you and it's not going to crush you when you're turning. But yeah, really interesting. They also have grass right in between here. So those are the stations where you board and there's grass right in between, right by the tracks. I have no idea why it's like that. But if you know why, please let us know. Um, looks like here we are, we've arrived. So we actually did sort of scope out this area a little bit last night just to walk around um, and make sure we get a sense of our direction. But I'm sure most of you guys know, this is one of the main buildings that was left after the atomic bomb was dropped over here in Hiroshima. So obviously a very sensitive area. And Tuntun didn't know too much about this. I don't think they learned too much about this in Vietnamese education, but so yeah, as an American living in Japan, we of course know about this and um, I didn't remember the exact date, but August 6, 1945, it was the first atomic bomb used as a weapon on people and just, yeah, a devastating part in history. But Tunshan was amazed when she found out that this building was still intact after the bomb. She just kind of expected everything to be destroyed, especially in a bomb that powerful. So when she first saw this, she was really shocked. But yeah, like you just saw the busy area that we went through to get over here. So the city has recovered. It's still a thriving city now. and. Yeah, it's part of the past, but it's always still important to remember the past and learn from the past, but not dwell on the past too much. So we're not going to be dwelling on this video. We're going to be enjoying the lovely city of Hiroshima and the beautiful cycling paths and the beautiful nature that you can see. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. Here's the main river. And I think this was the bridge. Yeah, it was the T-shaped bridge. And I think this was the target for the original bomb actually. So let's cycle around here, show you guys the area. It looks like they're doing some maintenance to, to keep this stable. Uh, she did make a comment saying like, how is it still intact after all the earthquakes and stuff here in Japan? But yeah, they, they do maintenance to, to keep it intact and try and preserve it as much as possible. So it looks like they're doing that today. But yeah, this is a beautiful river walk area here. And we've got one of the other memorials here. 
say I'm gonna not talk too much in front of the memorial areas because I don't want to disturb anyone else who's around just keep it peaceful oh wow what's this they have a they've got like a little farmers market looking thing here apparently Hiroshima is famous for like oranges and lemons which we learned when we did the Shimanami Kaido cycling route and there was just so many lemons along that route so <laughs> there's a lot of lemon flavored um, fruits and local tea foods that you can get let's take a quick view of the river here though pop up the bike we're on Kurokun today we're on our road bikes here we go beautiful river and yeah the trolley's going over the bridge over there right now very nice and there's some pretty massive mountains over off in the distance if we had some more time here I'd love to go out and do some more mountain exploration rides I also want to check out this side really quick just to see what's different and here you go you can go on a cruise to explore the river and I think some of the tour boats here go all the way from here to Miyajima which is the famous island with the shrine in the water that a lot of people go to when they visit this area but uh, onward with the tour I'm going to cross over here. Okay, here we go. And I believe this is the, the Children's Memorial. So this monument was built in honor of all the children who died from the bombing. And I believe there's a thousand or over a thousand different folded cranes here which are part of the wish to like promote world peace. Yeah, love and peace. Here we go. So these are all folded cranes, origami. And this is pretty funny. They have the carps. Um, they are crazy about baseball here. Like everywhere we go, we went to an okonomiyaki restaurant here, uh, a Hiroshima style okonomiyaki place. And the mayonnaise bottle had a cap, which was like a baseball cap. So they love their baseball here. It's kind of weird though. I don't know why they, they have that at this kind of memorial. And this is the character for peace. But going back over this way. Yeah, this is another one of the important memorials. Here we have the center view. So this is the Peace Memorial Park area. And I remember my first time I came here, I was a study abroad student in 2011 and I came here with my classmates and this is the, the museum in there. So they have a whole bunch of different displays, information and pictures and other um, things that you can see that just give you more information about what happened. And it was, it was really hard to watch. It was really hard to go in there, but I'm glad I did. And right here, we've got the eternal flame. So this flame, if I'm correct, symbolizes the wish for ending all nuclear weapons on the earth and just eliminating all nuclear weapons and so this flame is meant to continue on until the day that those weapons like are completely destroyed and there's no longer any nuclear weapons here on earth so this flame has been going on for i guess dozens of years now so let's pass by here So we got a sign here, no more bikes in this part. So we're gonna get off our bikes and walk. But this is the main museum area over here. All right, so we're over here now. I think we can start cycling again. And um, free sunscreen. <laughs> sunscreen is really expensive in Japan, by the way. So I think we've seen most of the main tourist attractions so far. And wow, this is also a rare sight. If you know anything about Japan, you know that garbage bins, public garbage bins are extremely rare. So I'm pretty amazed to see one in public right here. Mm. So the reason they don't have public garbage bins like this in most of Japan originally was because there were a lot of terrorist attacks and those are all done by putting bombs inside garbage bins like that. So they el completely eliminated public garbage bins in Japan for the most part and then they just never went back once the terrorist attack stopped they just kept it like that and things just got really clean so now that's the new standard here in Japan 
and I think we can ride over here. People have their bikes, so they probably rode over here. But we're gonna go really slow just to be safe. There's a security guard. He looked at me, he didn't say anything, so we should be good. But yeah, there's a normal park area right over there. I wanna check out this fountain over here, so that's where we're going. And I guess this is a really popular exercise area because there's a lot of people running here. But here we go, let's check out this giant fountain. Oh wow, more public bins here. There's a sign on the garbage saying no drones. And here we are, back by another main road. And I guess you can see it now, but this fountain goes massively high. Uh, they've also got the Japanese flag rose up here. You don't see that too often here, actually. Not too many places have the, the Japanese flag rose. I see it like a lot in America. Um, a lot of people have it in front of their house. A lot of, um, especially in the South, a lot of people have the Southern Confederate flag for some reason. Um, but in Japan, not too many people like just have the Japanese flag outside of their house or anything like that. Um, people in Vietnam do though. Oh, they're playing, they must be playing shogi over there, like Japanese chess. And wow, is that guy on an electric scooter? Pretty sure those are banned here. <laughs> but yeah, always fun to explore these little side roads just to see what you come across. You never know what you'll find. So we haven't gone on this road yet. Let's try over here. These are all the tours and buses. The Hiroshima bus. We came by car though. All right, so I think we've seen most of the attractions over in this park. We're gonna continue on. Head back to the river, see if we can find any cycling paths along the river. I think there might be some leaving outside the city going towards the north. So we're just gonna make our way back to the river here, see if we can find anything. Get some nice cobblestones here. Oh, and this is it. This is the T-Bridge, the original target. That's where we're cycling right now. And we're gonna cross here. Be careful. Trolley tracks. Here we go, we got the river. Is this gonna give us a river path? I see some people running down there. Oh, let's stop here. So here's a map of Hiroshima. This is the north, by the way. So you can see it's just a bunch of rivers. Like this is a river city. And we've got the castle right here. So yeah, I guess back in the day, if you were ever trying to attack this city, you were gonna have a difficult time because you've got river. Yeah, this is completely surrounded here. And technically it's an island. This is completely separated from the mainland. It's only connected by bridges. <laughs> That's why it's called Hiroshima Wide Island, I guess, back in the old days. But yeah, this would be really tough to attack. You've got a large river, a large river, another river, more rivers over here, and you've got mountains all around, and then you got the castle right in the center. So yeah, pretty solid defense. And here we go, another view of the river. So it looks like we do get some nice little cycling path right here up in the top. I was kind of expecting there to be a path down in the bottom, but it looks like they have a little path on the bottom over there. I see some people running on it. I'm not sure if it's smooth. I can't really see it from here. Oh, we got a nice little bike shop here too. 
or it's a coffee shop with bikes up in the front as decorations. Anyway, I think this is a, a good place to finish this video. So let's stop here actually. And we'll be making a few more videos of our time here in Hiroshima City. So be sure to check those out. And we're going to continue on with the ride. We hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you next time here on Tubo Cruise. Bye bye. Arigatou gozaimasu.